morning. It is good to see you all today. Aren't you all glad that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever? Amen. Can we just lift up a shout of praise to God today? Amen. Today is the day that he has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. to invite our prayer partners up now as we enter into our time of worship. We just know today that God is worthy and he's worthy of our praise and he's worthy of our worship. I 
So <clears throat> every Sunday morning, I, I, I wake up and I, and I check my phone because uh, Pastor Chris will do this order of service and I kind of look on there and see what he has me down for on any particular Sunday. So this morning he had me down for pastoral prayer and, and he wrote down some prayer requests underneath. We're going to be praying for Doug Prop. We're going to be praying for Jim Peterson because I apparently he broke his leg last night somehow. And then... He wrote down here, workers for the harvest. And then, and then he put scripture with a question mark, okay? And, I, and I'm telling you guys, anytime we're praying about something, this is what Pastor Chris is praying about. Workers for the harvest. We need workers for the harvest. And, and then he put scriptures with a question mark. And we, come on, guys, we know the scripture. Jesus, it's, it's in the Bible more than once. It says the harvest is plentiful. Or, or it's ripe, it's ready. But the laborers or the workers are few. And here's what we do. We convince ourselves that one of those things is wrong. The devil does a good job at that, man. He'll get it in our heads. And so we, we convince ourselves with his help that one of those things are wrong. We either convince ourselves of one of them or both. We say, yeah, I, I'm ready to do the work, but the harvest really isn't ready. So in other words, you're saying the word of God is wrong. People don't want to hear it. People don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear the gospel. They don't want to hear about Jesus. They don't want to hear it. Or we go, yeah, maybe, maybe there is. Maybe people do want to hear it. I think there probably is. But there's plenty of people that are going to do it. That's why we pay Pastor Chris. That's why he has a, le a leadership team. Let me tell you guys, Pastor Chris doesn't stand a chance for two hours on a Sunday morning and, and all the time that he commits throughout the week, what kind of dent do you think he's going to make by himself? He's only one person. Or me. Or our leadership. Or Lori and the women and, and, and the men. and Guys, don't convince yourself that the word of God is wrong. The harvest is ready. The harvest is plentiful and there's no workers. So what are we going to do about that? What are you going to do about that? Are we going to evangelize the lost? The Bible says they're ready. Don't convince yourself the word of God is wrong. It says they are ready. They are plentiful. For you guys to start the work to make disciples, to evangelize the lost, to spread the gospel. The workers are few. Look at the person next to you. They might not do anything. I hate to be that way. They might not do anything, guys. It might be up to you. The harvest is plentiful. It's ready. It's waiting. We need workers. You know, you know what make Pastor Chris super effective? A mighty army standing behind him, doing what we're called to do, and doing what this church is called to do. Make disciples, evangelize the lost, spread the gospel. You go, man, I, 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 don't, I don't know how to do that. Learn how to do it. That's why we're doing this discipleship stuff. That's why we're doing it. Learn how to do it, and then do it. Just pray. Oh God, we just thank you for your presence here today. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to present you guys with a dare. I dare you. I dare you to ask the Holy Spirit to convict you. I dare you. When it comes to when it comes to spreading the gospel, when it comes to making disciples and evangelizing lost, I dare you right now, ask the Holy Spirit, convict me if I can do better. I dare you. That's what we're going to pray. Oh God, right now we just pray for your Holy Spirit to come into this place. God, we pray that for every single person in this place that's open to you right now, Lord, Convict us right now of how we can be doing this better. 
or of people that we can be talking to, people that we can be evangelizing, people that we can be starting in a, this discipleship process with, Lord, whether it's leading it or going through it ourselves and preparing ourselves to do the same thing, God. Convict us, Lord. If we're not doing what you've called us to do, God, convict us now. But I pray that you break our hearts for lost people. You break our hearts, God, even for new believers who, who, just, who just need guidance, Lord. Let's not neglect them. Break our hearts, Lord, for people that just need to know you better and draw closer to you, God. Lord, if that's us, God, help us to find somebody to go through this discipleship process with that we can learn and grow and draw closer to you and learn how to evangelize people and learn how to be a good steward and do all of these things so, so that we can teach people that ourselves. God, convict us that we need to be working because other people might not do it. God, don't let us convince ourselves that your word is wrong. God, help us to believe that there are people out there that are ready, waiting to hear your words, Lord. Help us to believe that there are not a lot of people that are going to do it and convict us to be those people, to go out there with a goal, with a mission, Lord, to reach people with the gospel. Lord, today we pray for our brother, Doug. God, we, we continue to have faith, Lord. We continue to believe, Lord, we know that you are the healer. Lord God, we pray for nothing less than miracles today, Lord, that you will touch Doug's body, that you will heal him completely, Lord, that something incredible is going to happen. Lord, that the, the most amazing testimonies are going to come out of this situation, Lord. Heal him, Lord. Heal him, Lord. God, we pray that you bring him back healthy, healthy, Lord God. God we pray for Jim as he's broken his leg, Lord, that you just, you just help him to, to recover from this quickly. Lord, help people to rally around him and help him get things done, Lord. Don't let anything that he needs to get done fall to the wayside, Lord, that there's going to be people there to help him out. People from this family right here, they're going to call him. They're going to ask for what he needs and that we're going to be there to help him with whatever he needs, Lord God. God, just use this as an opportunity for Journey Church to pour into Jim and just make him feel even more part of this family, Lord God. Lord, we pray for this entire service. Lord, we believe that you're here. Lord God, we believe that you're here. Lord, we pray that you continue to work. Continue to let your Holy Spirit move in this place, Lord. God, speak through Pastor Chris this morning. And as always, Lord, every single week we pray, don't let anyone leave here the same as when they came. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. All right. Hey, we're going to take a few minutes, but before we do, why don't you guys grab your cell phones and whatever social media that you use, why don't you check in at Journey Church, say something about Journey Church, let people know that you're part of a family, that they're welcome to join, and, and just let them know where you're at, maybe take a picture, write a comment, and let's take the next seven minutes to find somebody and get to know them a little bit better. <laughs>